When reassembling this Centaur playfield, starting from the underside, I was telling myself how much of a pain in the ass this is to do. Meanwhile, the top side of the playfield is like, Wait till they get a load of me. What's up and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I do and talk everything pinball. So if that sounds interesting to you, then hit that subscribe button down below. We're going to pick up where we left off with this Centaur Playfield swap by showing you here's the underside when we completed doing it, just doing some final or what we assumed was going to be the final tweaking process of this swap. Here, this is just showing Jason doing some major polishing on every single metal piece that this machine has when it comes to the top side of the playfield. So here we have the pop bumper rings and he's gonna basically show you what he's doing with his polishing wheel. He just uses uh, rouge is what we use to put on the wheel and then we polish the hell out of the metal. So here's actually some footage of what it looks like when you've got it all nice and sexy looking and then you have the other pop bumper that he has not touched yet. Little bit of a difference there. So let's speed this up and we're going to be showing you how we put this play field back together. This was a very long process. So that's why this series is going to be a little bit lengthier than the Black Knight hardtop video. Because not only do we have to drill holes for almost every little thing, but we have to make sure that it's going to flow as well as the master play field. So you're going to see us pulling the master over, glancing over that and making sure that this new play field is going to match that. Then you're also going to see us pulling out our cell phones a lot more often to make sure that we're reassembling this back to the way it was. You're going to see us swapping out through this process. There's times where I'm going over to the ultrasonic to polish up some metal parts. Jason's going outside. He is uh, doing some polish on some metal parts as well. I'm installing some post, the rubbers, uh, any little thing that I can that I know that is safe to do. Like I said in the previous video, I don't like drilling into the top side of this play field because it's not my play field. I would rather him do any kind of permanent um enhancements or slash uh damage to this play field i would rather him be responsible for it because it's his play field Here is more polishing of the metal lanes that are going to be going around where the wall launches to the top side of the play field. Now, I don't know if I've got any before footage of this, but it's you can definitely tell that this is going to look a lot better than your standard factory sitting in a machine for 39 years. So, as we pan over, you can see how shiny and reflective and polished all the metal portions are, including the tops of all the screw heads and everything.
You can also see that he has a brand new CPR plastic set for this Centaur machine, just like he did with his Black Knight. So all new play field, all new plastics. This thing is going to look great. Some of the issues that we had when it came to drilling in screws into the play field is that some screws from the underside of the play field were conflicting and actually rubbing against each other that close causing conflict. So we had to loosen some screws from underneath so we can tighten the screws from above. That's just how it works sometimes. Other times we had to go from underneath and move screws over out of the way. Now you may have noticed that, hey, Carrie, I just saw you with a drill and you were drilling into the play field and you just told us a couple of minutes ago that you wouldn't be, damn it, Jackpot, shut up. Jackpot just had a seizure. Anyways, you're going to see that I had the drill and I was drilling holes and I said that I wouldn't do that. Okay, yes, you got me. Yes, I did drill some holes, but the ones that I did drill, I was 100% sure without a doubt that those holes needed to be there. Jason is having one hell of a time trying to get that thin film metal down to where the ball shoots out from underneath the play field up to the upper play field. That metal has got to be nice and level and he's having a little bit of an issue because he wanted it to be nice and polished as well because the one he had before was kind of corroded. It just didn't look very good. So he had to get it polished and get it completely flat and level with the shooter lane so there wasn't going to be any kind of conflict. So that took a little bit of his time up as well. I think right here is where I'm repairing. Shut the f Here I am repairing a switch from underneath the play field that I accidentally broke whenever I was pulling out staples from the GI line once we were disassembling the underside. So instead of buying an all new switch, leaf switch and all that kind of stuff, I repaired this one and all is good. You can definitely tell right here when I'm installing the flipper mechanics that it is a must almost to have a rotisserie when doing this particular job. When you're trying to line things up and it's difficult to see one side from the other unless you got this rotisserie to make sure everything is parallel. Look at it. Oh man, it's coming together, looking all sexy. Jason's basically just trying to see if these rollover switches are going to be nice and smooth. This is another tedious process that we're going to go into a little bit later in the video. Now 
Now Jason is making new wood rails for the play field because the other ones were pretty ragged out and busted. Instead of just replacing one, he's gonna do all new ones. The same way he did with his Black Knight. Only these are gonna start out just plain Jane white wood. So it's gonna give it a different look to it and you'll get to see that in a bit. But he's having to shave off just a little bit on this one because that's where the thin metal sheet is going to be going against that where the shooter lane is at. So he's got to get it shaved down just enough and get it all nice and smoothed out for the metal to transition onto the wood or vice versa without any kind of conflict on smoothness. Here Jason is replacing the wood rails that were originally on there with the ones that he freshly made. And as you can tell, we're not doing the whole OEM factory style of two inch staples, just two, 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 down the damn side rails. We're not doing it. Here's what the machine looks like with the freshly made side rails and, it, and actually since everything looks brand new this kind of makes the machine look like it's almost like homemade or it's the white wood phase development stage for this particular game. So here he is showing you how he made the rounded edges for this particular rail on this machine. Just a little bit of a sanding going around and around. This is of course sped up, but this is how he made it. There I am back there just doing some ultrasonic cleaning and all the metal parts. Now here's the fun part for me. You're going to see me working on this trough area a little bit going back and forth, back and forth because this is when I realized we don't have any footage of this trough area upon disassembly. If you go back to the very first video of the series, you'll remember when I state that this is where we realize that, oh man, we didn't document us disassembling this trough area. So I'm having to put this sucker together just by looking at it and figuring out how it's supposed to work. So that was fun. And I got the trough area metal portions all nice and polished up while I was at it as well.
This is when I was working on the lockdown portion of the cabinet. I saw that the one that was in the cabinet was completely horrendous, like rusted up. It was bad, not good. So Jason also purchased the lockdown bar decal that you can get from titanpinball.com on multiple different gaming platforms such as your Bally Williams, Gottlieb, it's, it's whatever, Data East. Go there, find it. Highly recommended. I want to say it's only like 11 bucks. It adds a major cosmetic improvement to your lockdown bar. And here's a nice pan over. Now, as you can see in the queen's chamber, your bottom left area, he currently has the old yellowish looking plastics for the game in there as of right now for testing purposes. He does change that out to new and clear ones. And I want to say that's being done right now, actually. At this point in time, we're trying to get everything in place to go into the smoke testing phase to make sure everything is functioning correctly before just sliding it back into the cabinet. So now here we are hooking all the connectors back up to the game and trying to make sure that nothing catches fire. Bam, game turns on and we have no lights. Now we have sound and we have mechanical functionality and switches are functioning, but we have no lights. So that was a puzzling effect for us at first. And then we had to do a lot of troubleshooting and we figured out some issues and there are some tips that you might want to know about this particular machine and how we ended up resolving this problem. That in itself is a whole nother video. I may have two, possibly even three more episodes showing the process involved in getting this machine up to 100% and looking absolutely amazing. Before you click off and go to another video on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button to give this video a like. It really helps out the channel. Leave me a comment down below letting me know how things are going with this project and your opinion. Once again, be sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you can be notified of whenever I upload new content for your viewing pleasure. Until next time, peace out.